If I say, for example, hey Merrick, nice haircut, right? That's a compliment, right? That's a compliment? But it's not this compliment. How do you spell that compliment when you say, hey, you did a really great job? You spell it with an? With an I, very good. So this is not compliment with an I here, right? Not compliment, which is, yeah, you did a great job. When we say compliment with an E, yeah, it's things that go together. Things that go together. That's the sort of overall meaning, right? So I think we should say down here, right? The overall meaning is these are things that go together and that can mean different things in different contexts. So let's just write that down first. Things that go together. Okay, now as an example, um, the sort of most uh, well-known like culinary food example is people say you might have a particular meal and then there's a complimentary wine, like a particular drink, its flavor matches really nicely with this, right? So for example, you might have a food and drink combination and um, like I don't actually drink wine myself, so I can't give you a good example, but red wines go with some foods, white wines go with others, right? So you might say, oh, these complement each other really nicely. They go together, okay? I want us to think back to the start of, well, in fact, it was last year, but we did have a look at it this year. In geometry, this word complement has a particular meaning. It's about two particular kinds of things that go together. Does anyone remember? It's, it's a particular kind of thing within a shape. I wonder, Krishna, what are you thinking? Angles. It's angles, very good. So complementary angles, right? Let's just write it down first and then Jessica, I'll get your thought. Complementary angles are angles that go together, but specifically, what does that mean, Jessica? It adds up to 90 degrees. Adds up to 90 degrees. So complementary yeah. angles add to 90 degrees. So supplementary is very similar. They add up to not 90 degrees, but 180, right? So Complementary angles, they are up to 90 degrees. You might even like to jot down over here, like put a little right angle there, yeah? So if I put two angles here that make up this, I'm going to call them A degrees and B degrees, you can see they go together and they make something nice and neat, so they're complementary angles. But when we think about probability, and that's what we started looking at yesterday, when we're talking about complementary events, these are two things that make up everything that's possible. Let me say that again. Two different events that make up everything possible, okay? So, two events that make up all possibilities. And I'm gonna give you some examples. By the way, we have, um, we have a word for this, or a phrase, I wonder if we um, encountered it before. When we say all possibilities, what's our fancy word for that? Sample space. Sample space, very good. So I'm gonna write that underneath. So if you've got complementary events, if you put them together, you don't get a right angle. If you put complementary events together, you've got everything. You cover everything in the sample space. So let me give you an example with my first prop. Here's my uh, $1 coin. It's a 2009, so it's a 10-year-old coin. Okay. So right now, the face that I'm holding towards you guys is the tails side. Okay, that's the tails face. So the complementary event for tails is whatever makes up all of the other possibilities. In this case, there's one other thing that can happen. If it's not tails, it's heads. heads. Very good. So tails and heads, or well, heads and tails, these are complementary events, right? If you didn't get tails, you had to get heads, and these are the total possibilities, okay? Let me give you another example. We've got another prop here, and we might use this a little bit later in the lesson. So this is a deck of playing cards, okay? Now, I just want to get a quick show of hands, just so I can gauge, you know, how familiar you guys are with this. How many of you have, like, played a game with decks of playing cards before? Hands up. I just wonder how many... Okay, everyone, can I get some examples? What games have you played with a deck of cards? Bravi. Speed, okay. Harry? Solitaire. Solitaire. Enoch? Um, poker. poker. Okay, someone got a different, Leah? Cheat. Cheat, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Haley. Go Fish is a classic. One more, Hyang? Mafia. Mafia. Okay, we can go on and on and on. Very good. I just wanted to get a sense of familiarity because, you know, people play all games on phones and that kind of thing. So if I picked out an example, I might say, and I'd love you to draw this with me. I'm just going to pick out a card at random. Let's say this guy. All right. This is the Eight of Clubs. The Eight of Clubs. Okay. So if we, uh, oh, it's a black card. Sorry. Eight of Clubs. 
Mm. Eight. What's the clubs look like? It's got those three things at the top, right? Yeah. Three little round, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay, there's my eight of clubs. Is it recognizable as an eight of clubs? Okay. So if you've got the eight of clubs, and that's one event, right? How would you say the complementary event with that? Well, it's a little complicated because there's how many cards in a deck? There's 52. So here I've got one in my hand, and the complementary event is the other 51 cards, right? So in this way, what I would say is this, its complementary event is or not the Eight of Clubs, which is not a very fancy way to say it, but that is the complementary event. Because remember, it's got to cover everything, right? It's got to cover every possibility. What if I took out um, all of the clubs and I had them all in my hand? So here's the, here's the King of Clubs and here's the Six of Clubs and the Queen of Clubs. Suppose I took out all of the clubs and I just said, here they are in my hand, okay? Here's one possible event, okay? What would be the complement of the clubs? What's the other thing that's possible? So you don't know what the other three suits are called? You've got spades, the other black one. You've got diamonds and hearts, very good. So if I said, here we go, one more underneath here. Uh, stay with the same color. <clears throat> if I said that clubs was one event, so I'm just gonna say clubs. then its complement would be all the other things. So it'd be all, uh, what do we say, spades. So that's like this sort of spiky looking one. There we go. Diamond and hearts. Diamonds and hearts, right? So you've got another way of saying all of the different possibilities. The important thing is when you have a look at all of the things you've listed, right? That should cover everything in the deck of cards or everything on the coin. Or if I said the weather, like a weather event might be sunny. It's sunny today, right? What would be the complement of sunny? Now it's tricky, right? You, you, you can't say, you can't say rainy because it can be not sunny without there being rain, right? So you might say cloudy? or night, so I guess we'd say it's sort of like this, right? It's either sunny or not sunny, okay? Um, now, just one more thing underneath this, so that you've got um, a way of writing this, because it's nice to have examples, but we also want the notation. So if I've got the probability of some event, P for probability, E for event. Because we use this all the time, what we would say is that the complement of E is that letter E with a bar across the top. So I'm going to write this E and then I'm going to put a bar across the top. That means not E. You could use the words not E, but you know us mathematicians, famously lazy, we're always searching for a faster way to write things. 